So I want to show you how I take Mark's photos and turn them into original pieces of art like this silk screen behind me. This is a 60 by 60 acrylic on canvas that I made out of an image Mark captured in October of 1987 of Guns N' Roses, as you can see, in front of CBGB. And I thought a fun image to do that with would be one I'm actually working on right now. It's a picture of Van Halen from 1981, and it wound up being the cover shot that Life Magazine used for its tribute issue to the late, great Eddie Van Halen. So let me walk you through the process quick. I'll go into more detail on the different steps uh, in other videos, but this is a quick overview of how we take the photos and turn them into silk screens on canvas. Every piece I do starts on Photoshop. Now for a piece like the Van Halen one, you're looking at anywhere between 10 to 20 hours of design time, although there's definitely a lot of final tweaking and twisting, so it's probably somewhere more along the lines of 25 to 30 computer hours all said and done. Now I start by creating a file the size of the finished piece. In this case, it's 65 inches wide by 60 inches tall. I make the width five inches longer so the art will wrap around the edges when it's stretched onto an inch and a half wide wooden stretcher bar. That allows my finished pieces to be hung directly onto your wall without requiring framing. I then drag in a high-res copy of the image in color, make multiple copies of it. I then create a second file in black and white. That's where I'm going to play around with the light levels to reveal different amount of details. From there, I transform the image using the bitmap feature. That's how I'm able to create depth on each layer by changing the grayscale image into either lines or dots that will complement each other when stacked on top of each other during the course of printing. Once the design portion's done, the digital part, every color will live on its own separate layer in the Photoshop document. Now, as you can see, I start with the lightest colors and build up until the final layer, which is in black. It's all about stacking colors, adding depth, adding detail as I go. Once I'm satisfied with the finished piece on Photoshop, I then separate each layer into sections in a third file, which I then print onto transparencies on my 24 inch wide Epson Professional printer. For this piece, I'm gonna to need to print a total of around 700 inches of transparencies. Once I'm done printing all of those, we're then ready to move the process to my studio space. I begin by coating the screens in a light sensitive photo emulsion that allows me to transfer the images on the transparencies onto the screen. That's why this video that you're looking at is yellow because this room uses special photo darkroom lighting to avoid exposing the screens until I'm ready. Now essentially screen printing this way is a form of chemical stenciling which makes it possible to burn remarkably precise images onto the screens. Once they've been exposed, I rinse them off with a garden hose, any part of the screen which was exposed to light stays on, any part which was not, which is anything hidden behind the image on the transparency, washes away, which then allows me to push paint through it onto the canvas once dry. Now, because my screens only have a printable area of roughly 34 by 44 inches, and my maximum optimal size squeegee is 18 inches, on a piece this size, 60 by 60, since I'm doing everything by myself, each individual color layer requires six separate screens, each of which has to be burned, used, and then reclaimed so I can repeat the process over and over again until the piece is finished. It's an incredibly time-consuming and labor-intensive process. The studio time for a piece like this wound up being around 40 to 50 hours over the course of seven to eight separate studio trips. Once completed, I take the canvas to my professional framing company in Midtown, they mount the piece onto wooden stretcher bars, and they're now ready to hang on the wall.